So here I was flying through Space Engine trying to find a planet that would be very similar in composition and in size to the Planet 9 that we're actually trying to find in our own solar system so I can start talking about various um, hypotheses and various theories of Planet 9. And I discovered this really cool solar system that has quite a lot of planets that may actually look like uh, the uh, hypothetical Planet 9. We're going to go and explore them right now uh, by pressing this button right here that will show us all of the planets in the solar system. And so here they all are. There's actually quite a lot of different planets that this system has. And it just so happens that these three planets might actually be a good representation of what Planet 9 may look like. The first one here is a frozen ice giant that's about 13 masses of our planet Earth. And it has a really good, or really interesting at least, um, selection of rings around it as well. Uh, pink in color and relatively cold as well. So if we were to find Planet 9, it would very likely be some sort of a ice giant, very similar to this, but maybe not as massive as this. Maybe something closer to this particular um, planet that only has a mass of about 9.5 masses of Earth. And this here is actually an ice world, so it's a planet that consists of, according to this, um, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, um, argon, helium, and neon, but also a very large uh, amount of rock. Really, really cool lines here. I don't really know what these are, but possibly some sort of crater lines. And, uh, of course, um, a very thick layer of ice as well, because it is an ice world. So this, this is a pretty interesting looking planet. So for all we know, maybe this is what Planet 9 looks like. And this planet also does have its own rings as well. And then we have this planet right here, which is actually the closest to the star in the system. And it's a little bit too hot to be a real Planet 9, but its mass is about eight times the mass of Earth. So for all we know, maybe just maybe this is actually what Planet 9 would look like with the only one exception of not being... Um, an actual hot desert like this planet right here. So this is a desert planet um, and a little bit too hot for us, but um, mass-wise, it is very similar to Planet 9. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, the idea of Planet 9 and also just briefly discuss uh, some of the evidence that we have today um, for why it's very likely that there is a massive object such as Planet 9 in the outer solar system and how we actually know that it, it, something has to be in that region uh, because otherwise the orbits of other objects would not be as um, eccentric as they are today. Welcome to What the Math and I hope you enjoy this video. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use Universe Sandbox 2 to answer a few questions. And specifically, the first question is going to be, so how far away would Planet 9 be from our Earth if it was actually found and discovered and if it actually does exist somewhere out there? And the second question is going to be, um, so what is actually the evidence that we know or have today? And uh, we're going to use one of the simulations here to try to basically find out what happens if there is no Planet 9 and what happens to some of the objects in the solar system. So first of all, let's talk about the distance. Now imagine, um, we're actually going to use a, a bit of an analogy here. Imagine the distance between the Earth and the Moon was about uh, 10 meters. Let's just say that um, on the scale of uh, something that you can kind of understand, from Earth to the Moon, it's about 10 meters. So this is about, uh, or 30 feet that is. So that's about the distance from, let's just say, if I were to go down to my fridge and come back uh, with something from my fridge, I would probably walk about 10 meters. All right, so that's that's a good analogy, I think. And let's uh, now zoom out a little bit and talk about the distances between Earth and the Sun. This is known as astronomical unit. And if we use the same analogy, so here the distance between Earth and the Sun would be approximately 5,000 meters or about 15,000 feet. And this is basically the uh, so-called 5K. So if you ever uh, went running 5,000 meters or 15,000 feet, uh, or basically uh, about 3 point something miles, 3.5 miles. Um, this is essentially the distance from Earth to Sun using the same analogy. And for me personally, 5, 5K takes about an hour to run. So if, uh, if it takes me just a, about a minute to go from Earth to the Moon to get a drink from my fridge, uh, from here to here running would take me about an hour. And so that's a one astronomical unit. Now we're going to zoom out quite a lot as a matter of fact. And place a hypothetical planet, actually we're just going to generate um, a random gas giant, 
at a distance of approximately 600 ish astronomical units this is an average distance um, that we speculate uh, planet 9 might have it, it goes down to about maybe 300 astronomical units but it can go up to about 1200 because its orbit is relatively um, eccentric and so let's just say that this is our planet 9 right here and over there we can kind of see the rest of the solar system now how far away is this from from us and from the sun if uh walking to the fridge and back represented the moon and if doing 5k represented the distance to the sun then the distance from from the center of the solar system to planet 9 would be equivalent of about 3000 kilometers or about uh 2000 miles which is basically a distance from like new york city to Mexico City. That's how far away this would be in comparison to everything else um, in our solar system. So it's actually really, really far, which is why it's so hard for us to see it and which is why it's so hard for us to find where this planet is. All right, so that's the distance. So let's actually go into different simulation here. And here we're going to go into the evidence for a ninth planet. This actually shows us uh, the hypothetical orbit for where planet nine might be and uh, also showed us the orbits of other dwarf planets here and essentially the reason for why we think planet 9 might be out there because their orbits are very very elliptical and they're elliptical in a very specific way now if i were to run this for many 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 years I'm just going to accelerate this dramatically um, and just watch what happens so basically they will start orbiting around the sun uh, most of them will take quite a few thousands of years to do this this is already a year almost year 4,000 and planet nine hypothetically would take about 15,000 years to orbit. And as it basically passes by the inner solar system or not inner solar system, but it's inner orbit, it's um, uh, periapsis, um, it would, this is when it would actually influence the other objects and make their orbits a little bit more elliptical. And for most of its orbit, it would stay on the outskirts and not really do much. But because right here, right in this sort of section, it has, uh, due to its mass, and its mass would be about 10 times mass of Earth, um, it would actually start influencing a lot of these uh, dwarf planets and make their orbit a little bit more elliptical. And so this is actually why we think there is Planet 9. And what I wanted to see is, well, first of all, let's, let's see what happens if we actually make the mass of this planet even more massive. Let's actually change it to like, I don't know, five times mass of Jupiter. And let's see if the orbits go even more extreme. So that's going to be step number one. We're going to change the orbit, uh, sorry, not the orbit, uh, change the mass and run this simulation for, I don't know, a few more thousands of years just to see how the orbits actually change. You'll, uh, you'll notice that as I'm running this faster and faster. So now this is a much more massive planet, which technically should um, have a higher effect on, on the orbits of, of these other planets. And so let's just slow down a little bit just so we can see how this affects them. And here we go. So now it might not be obvious right away, but if you were to just look at each individual dwarf planet and just look at their semi-major axis, which represents their actual um, orbit around the sun, you'll notice that it actually decreases dramatically and changes quite a lot quite fast. And a lot of this is due to sudden increase in mass here from the planet 9 and essentially its effect on these various objects. So depending on where they are um, in their orbit, they might come really close to uh, or much closer to the sun or they might end up getting shot out into the outer so solar system. And by the way, there's actually Neptune in the middle here as well which also has a bit of an effect on these um, dwarf planets, but not as much effect as this supermassive object would um, orbiting right here. And here we go, here we actually have our first loss. And this is of course due to Planet 9 kicking that dwarf planet known as 2010 0GB174 out of the solar system or possibly increasing its apoapsis dramatically. Yeah, I think it's still in the solar system, but it just it, it suddenly had its um, eccentricity increased to like 95.95 which is actually very very eccentric and so that's what happens if you increase the mass let's try this again if we actually completely eliminate planet 9 so let's see what happens to these orbits over time if there is no planet 9 
Oh, and before I start, I should probably remove Neptune as well, just so that we don't have any effect from any massive bodies here. So let's find out what happens to these objects. If there's basically nothing acting on them, uh, there's absolutely no mass acting on them from either Neptune or from uh, imaginary Planet 9 that we just had in there. And we're going to accelerate time just to see what happens to their orbits. I'm actually just going to take one of them as an example and look at its semi-major axis. And you can kind of see that it's actually started decreasing dramatically. So over time, if there was actually no mass from either Neptune or Planet 9 that is um, acting on them, what would happen to most of these objects is that their orbit would start to circularize around the Sun in a similar way that, you know, how orbit of our planet Earth is almost circular around the Sun. And this is because of many, many, many years of many billions of years of essentially circularization of orbit, um, these, all of these objects would eventually have all of their orbits almost entirely circular. And this is going to happen after a few thousands years here as they um, stabilize their orbits. So the, here comes the yellow orbit. I don't even see what that is anymore, but it's about to be almost circular and following with the other orbits as well. Uh, the orbit of Sedna will take a little bit longer, but it will also get there as well. And essentially, this is why uh, the scientists believe that there's got to be something acting on them. There's got to be something that is pushing these dwarf planets to have these very eccentric orbits, because without the hypothetical planet 9 or some other uh, massive body or something else massive out there, they would have essentially very circular orbits, which they don't. We've found quite a lot of them that have very eccentric orbit instead. Uh, but this is what would happen if there was no mass acting on them. So all of these are now almost entirely circular, except for Sedna, because it will take a little bit longer. But you'll notice that even Sedna, it's 484 now, even Sedna will start losing its semi-major axis with time. It's going to slowly make its way closer and closer to the sun, uh, orbit after orbit, 483 now. So it will take a few hundreds of orbits, but it will get to the circular orbit as well. And if I were to look at one of these now, uh, their eccentricity is a lot lower than it used to be, and will eventually reach eccentricity of close to zero. This is 0 0.002 now. And so this is the main reason why we think Planet 9 might be real, and also I hope that in this video I showed you how far away it might be if it is out there. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like this, and share this with your friends. Check out some of the other Space uh, Engine and also Universe Sandbox 2 videos that I've posted previously. And check out the previous Planet 9 video that I posted as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye. And I would also like to thank those of you who support me on Patreon. The link for the Patreon page is in the description below. So if you'd like to join the Patreon supporters, uh, don't hesitate and click on the link. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Game you later. Bye-bye.